And greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every Saturday and Sunday morning from 8 o'clock until 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. And we are here for you to share information with you to improve the quality of your life and to give you a better understanding of how food, nutrition, and supplements are more effective than drugs. Drugs may save lives because they are quicker in their response. They're more powerful. So they can save lives. But Americans are sick. We are the sickest country in the world because our diet is such a high carbohydrate diet that it all converts to sugar and it weakens and sickens the body. And food is our best medicine. Healthy food, proper exercise, a good amount of sleep, all these wrap into one to make a healthier lifestyle. And we'll talk more about that right here as we talk about various topics to make our bodies healthier and we live a better quality of life. We can do that easily by talking about a way to lower cholesterol and triglycerides without drugs Statin drugs are a horrible drug. They cause all kinds of side effects, very serious side effects, and for no reason. Cholesterol is not our enemy. It's our friend. Now, triglycerides is an enemy to your heart health, but not cholesterol. We make our hormones from cholesterol. We make our vitamin D from cholesterol. Every cell in our body requires cholesterol. Even our brain. Our brain needs cholesterol to function correctly. Isn't it funny that we've never heard of Alzheimer's disease until they started prescribing satin drugs, lowering cholesterol? which the brain needs. The brain is only 2% of the body weight, but requires 25% of the manufactured cholesterol. Yes, manufactured. Our body makes it. Our body requires so much cholesterol that I believe God, or you could say creator, or you can say whoever made your body, knew that we needed a high level of cholesterol. More people die, have strokes and heart attacks when they have low cholesterol. And then we'll talk about a, yet another study on how terrible un, ultra-processed foods are for our health. Ultra-processed food destroys our health. And then we'll talk about how kids can focus better in school. And then, do you suffer from seasonal allergies? Well, I'll tell you what. Try. Oh, I'll wait. Just hang on. Don't go away. Because I'll tell you how you can improve your health, even if you suffer from allergies. And then we'll tell you how to give your gut a boost with nuts. We have a lot to talk about today, even including one in 10 Americans over 65 has dementia. And then natural ways to boost 
your testosterone. And you know what? It's never, ever too late to eat healthy. No matter how old you are. If you adopt a healthy diet, either the Mediterranean diet, the keto diet, or the paleo diet, each of these are healthier than what Americans are eating today. And within three months, not 10 years or five years, but in three months, you'll see a noticeable change in your health. It's never, ever too late to change your diet and start all over again. And then we'll talk about how to treat children who are coughing all the time, dry cough, nighttime cough. We'll talk about a variety of topics today and bring you more information on how you can become healthier. And not too much diet and diet sodas. That just doesn't make any sense. But we have a lot to talk about today. But I always want to remind you that you can always go to my website, Terry Talks Nutrition. And there you can find additional information on how to improve your health. We put up a variety of articles and topics You can read my newsletter. In fact, you can subscribe to my newsletter and you'll get it every Friday addressed to your email address. And you can listen to my radio show anywhere around the world by going to the show section on my website, click on live, but you better be on the same time we are here in the Central Standard Time in the USA. You can click on and listen. We've got listeners all over the world. It's amazing. From Green Bay, Wisconsin, we are reaching India, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, and many European countries. I'm so happy that we have listeners around the world. Now, if you can't listen listen live, you can go to the show section, the radio show section, and all the shows have been archived there for you, stored there for you, that you can pick out a show anytime you want, listen anytime you want, at your convenience, and take it with you. Listen to it in the car. Listen to it while you're walking or running, or whatever you're doing. You can listen to Terry anywhere you want. So let's talk about some new research on a plum, or some call it a berry. But it is a very large berry that grows in India. It's called Amla. A-M-L-A. Amla. And AMLA has been researched extensively for lowering cholesterol. I don't believe in lowering cholesterol. But if you do and you want to lower cholesterol, I think it's much, much more important to increase the HDL. The HDL is a good cholesterol. Lower lower the triglycerides, absolutely lower the triglycerides and increase the HDL. Don't worry about lowering the total number of cholesterol. Many doctors take a quick test and say, oh, your cholesterol is 280 or 290. That's way too high. 
No, it's not too high. You have to look at the fractions of the cholesterol, the LDL, the HDL, the triglycerides. They paint a different picture and just don't lower arbitrarily the total cholesterol level. That's not the way to do it. And that's the way they want so many people on statin drugs. 30 to 40 million people today are taking statin drugs for absolutely no reason. Now, there's a very, very small population of of men, not women. Women should never, ever take a statin drug. There have never been studies on women. The studies have been on men, and they just say, oh, that's okay for women too. There is a small population of men between the age of 40 and 68 that have had already a heart attack or a stroke. They may benefit. But it is not just willy-nilly give everybody a pill. Cholesterol is good for us. That's how our brain functions. That's how we make our hormones, testosterone, estrogen. That's how we make vitamin D. Cholesterol is the starting material. And it's so important that the body actually manufactures it for us. That means we don't have to worry about finding it someplace or eating it someplace because it's already made for us. That's how critical it is for the body. But if you do want to lower it, which I would never, ever suggest, but let's increase the HDL and lower the LDL and lower the triglycerides. So do you really need to reduce your cholesterol levels? I'll tell you what. Researchers analyzed the data from 47,000 people age 75 and older with no history of heart heart disease uh, at all who were taking statin drugs. Well, the results of this research, this analytical research data, statin drugs did not lower heart disease or death from any cause. This is exactly the way it said in the study. Statin drugs were not associated with a reduced risk of heart disease or death from any cause. Except for that one specific group of people, men, 40 to 68, that had a previous heart attack or stroke after age 85. After age 85, listen up, after age 85, absolutely no benefits from taking statin drugs was found, including people with diabetes. After 85, no benefit. And studies have shown that for every person with a heart attack prevented by a statin drug, two or more people suffered liver damage, kidney failure, cataracts, or extreme muscle weakness from taking statin drugs. You don't need to lower cholesterol. But if you're on drugs, I'm not the one to tell you to go off your drugs. I'm not a doctor. Thank God. I'm not a doctor. But go to your doctor. Or buy a book. There's several good books on why we should not lower cholesterol. 
In fact, I wrote a small pamphlet on some of the literally failure of lowering cholesterol. And if you want a copy of that, you can go to my website. It's on my website. Talking about the biggest scam in the world is prescribing statin drugs. It's a scam. It's a money-making scam. The drug company should be penalized for the garbage that they put out. For every heart attack that was, that was so-called prevented by a statin drug, two or more people suffered liver damage, kidney failure, cataracts, or extreme muscle weakness. Is that what you want? Because by taking a drug, you, you almost assure yourself of more damage. And really, just stop worrying so much about cholesterol. It's not the enemy. 25% of the body's cholesterol is found in the brain. 25%. You wonder why people can't think anymore? They've been on statin drugs, which lowers cholesterol, which affects brain function, and possibly could cause Alzheimer's disease. So is it worth it? A study that had 32 years, a study of 32 years of data from 1968 to 2001, measuring cholesterol levels and mental function, collected from 1,500 women, found declining cholesterol levels, declining, lowering, reducing cholesterol levels from midlife to late life, increased the risk of dementia, loss of memory, loss of learning skills, and Alzheimer's disease. What you really should be concerned about is to make sure that you have low levels of LDL and if you have low levels of HDL, the beneficial cholesterol, I would be very concerned. And if you also have increased amounts of inflammatory triglycerides and oxidized cholesterol. Triglycerides is a type of fat that's made from carbohydrates and sugar. So when you eat carbohydrate, bread, pasta, cakes, pies, donuts, you name it. When you can't use all those carbohydrates for energy, the body packs all the fat that is produced from the carbohydrates into your cells for an emergency when you need them. And that, all that fat are called triglycerides. They cause more heart disease and heart attacks and stroke. So the fat that you don't want comes from carbohydrates and sugar. Get your HDL up, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. That is the good cholesterol. That's the high-density lipoprotein, that high levels. You want high levels. Women should be over 50 on the HDL. Men should be over 40. And sometimes they're very, very low. These are very protective. The, LD, the HDL is very protective of having heart disease or strokes. Now, I mentioned AMLA. 
It's commonly called Indian gooseberry. And amla, in studies that have been recently done, shows that it prevents oxidation of the LDL. That's the bad cholesterol. And it's not bad until it becomes oxidized. Amla reduces triglycerides up to 24% and increases the HDL levels by about 14%. Clinical trials have been conducted with AMLA. A-M-L-A, AMLA. 98 people with abnormally high lipids, total cholesterol, triglycerides, and LDL. They received either AMLA extract, 500 milligrams twice a day, or a placebo twice a day for 14 weeks. Excuse me, 12 weeks it was. 12 weeks. Results in the AMLA group. 73% had significantly lower total and the bad cholesterol levels, the LDL. And 89% had a reduction in triglycerides. In a separate trial of AMLA versus placebo, the HDL levels increased by 14%, taking 1,000 milligrams daily, possibly 500 milligrams in the morning, 500 milligrams at night, or if you're pressed, 1,000 milligrams just once daily. 1,000 milligrams total for the day. I would not worry about your cholesterol. I would worry about your triglycerides. I would worry about having a high LDL cholesterol level. But just to go on a statin drug, because the doctor found that your cholesterol was 260, 280, 290, whatever. You know, it used to be 240. They thought, thought 240 was a healthy dosage, a healthy level. 240. And then it was lowered to 200. Now, all that does is increase the population of people that have a level of cholesterol that can be then treated with statin drugs. Now you can treat all those people to get them down under 200. Before it, was, before it was down below 240. Now it's 200. I'm waiting for them to get it down to 180. We'll be zombies. People won't be able to think. They won't be able to remember anything. Cholesterol is really, really a nutrient. Our bodies make it. And when they give you a statin drug, it blocks an enzyme that produces cholesterol. So it stops producing cholesterol. That same enzyme that lowers cholesterol manufactures CoQ10. And CoQ10 is one of the best medicines for your heart. Natural medicine, natural alternative for your heart, CoQ10. That same enzyme blocks the manufacturing of cholesterol and CoQ10. And the body makes them from the same enzyme system. That's not by coincidence. That's the way it should be. Nature knows, God knows how to make that body properly. But we screw it up. So, this is only my opinion. But I've read enough and seen enough literature, enough studies to show that cholesterol is not the enemy. We need it. 
and we need it daily. We don't need triglycerides. So if you get rid of the soda, get rid of the sugar, get rid of the high content of carbohydrates, follow the ketogenic diet, get rid of the carbohydrates, eat a good protein diet with plenty of good quality fats, like olive oil. You can include butter and cream, all the good fats, and you'll be healthier. Now, I only have about a minute and a half before we go into the break. And I hate to think and have start another topic. And I do want to start another topic, but when you just get into about a minute of it, then you have to pause and stop. And But I'm going to come back right here on Terry Talks Nutrition. Remember, I'm Terry Naturally and talk about another study to show how terrible ultra-processed food is for our health. People are eating junk. Only calories, sugar, refined, <coughs> excuse me, refined carbohydrates. That's what makes up the American diet. Sugar, refined carbohydrates, soft drinks, ultra-processed foods. Foods are not made to be eaten. They're, make, they're made for profit. And they'll do anything they can to increase the profit by lowering the quality of our food. They genetically modify it. They use all kinds of preservatives and chemicals dyes, coloring, all the junk that we eat has no nutritional value. But I'll come back right after this break. Don't go away. I have a lot more to talk to you about beyond process, the ultra processed food. And welcome back, my friends. This is Terry Naturally. We're here with Terry Talks to Nutrition. Go to my website, Gain a lot more information. Subscribe to my newsletter. You'll get a brand new newsletter every Friday that goes to your email address. You can also listen to the radio show as much as you want. Not just Saturday and Sunday. That's when I'm live in the local area of Green Bay, Wisconsin. You can listen locally through the Wisconsin market. We have about 20,000 listeners on the weekends. And then we have listeners all over the world that join us by changing their times to be on the same time we are here and listen live. Or they go to the radio show section and pick out a show and listen at their convenience any time of the day. So you'll learn a lot more and get better information. You can buy my books. They're relatively inexpensive. And sometimes I post some on Facebook for just 99 cents. Otherwise, they run about $8.95, $8.95. That's a very cheap price to pay to change your life, to maybe save your life. So we're going to talk about ultra-processed foods and others in this half hour. Yes, what you eat you know, we are plagued with chronic inflammation. There's nothing bad about inflammation. All inflammation is good until it, away, until it is so chronic that it starts eating away in your tissues, your cells, your joints. 
But when we have oxidative stress that damages our cells, ages our cells, damages our DNA, and causes 98% of all of our diseases, inflammation just goes to that area of damage to try to repair it. But we don't change the process of inflammation. We cause the inflammation every day, every day, day in and day out. Because whatever we eat can cause inflammation. Number one, carbohydrates. All carbohydrates, bread, pasta, whatever, is converted in the body to sugar just like you have in the sugar bowl. And sugar. There is no healthy sugar. And then the refined vegetable oils. All of these sugar, carbohydrates, and vegetable oils cause inflammation. We are, we are a nation of inflammation. So researchers in Australia analyzed four years of data from 2,000 men and women at an average age of 57 to determine what effect their diets had on inflammation levels in their bodies. The result of this four-year study. Ultra-processed foods made up 40% of the subject's daily caloric intake. For each three and a half ounces, just three and a half ounces of increased intake of ultra-processed foods, the inflammatory C-reactive protein levels Increased by 4%. 4% more inflammation. That's only three and a half ounces. That barely keeps the mouse alive. Think how many ounces Americans eat. And each three and a half ounces increases inflammation, the inflammatory C reactive protein levels, by 4%. Three and a half ounces is roughly equivalent to a deli meat sandwich on white bread plus a cup of sugar-coated cereal. Not much. That sounds like a a meal made by a meal made by many Americans today. A white bread deli meat sandwich. And then people are suffering from arthritis, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, strokes. All these conditions and diseases are brought about by what we eat, not by a lack of drugs, not by unknown science that we don't know what disease, how this disease is caused. We cause all the diseases by what we eat or what we don't eat. And when we have an increased C-reactive protein, CRP, it's a marker that doctors look for to determine the level of inflammation. So when it's increased, a high level of C-reactive protein, it's associated with an increased risk of cancer, heart attacks, strokes, and even even COVID-19 and other viral illnesses. We are a sick nation, a sick country, a sick people. In contrast, people eating diets consisting of whole, unprocessed meats, vegetables, fruits, and extra virgin olive oil 
have much, much lower reduced risk of inflammation and decreased risk of disease. The most powerful superfood, in my opinion, is extra virgin olive oil. It is a superfood. So try to include unprocessed meats, no deli meat, eat a ribeye, sirloin steak, eat meat, real meat, fish, seafoods in general, vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, berries, and extra virgin olive oil. And if you avoid all the other garbage and junk and concentrate on what I just mentioned in terms of the food to eat, or go to my website, terrytalksnutrition.com, and there you can see my diet. Go to the tab that says diet, or Terry's diet. And I'll give you the recommendations of what to eat and how to eat. But there is nothing more powerful than extra virgin olive oil. It'll cure what ails you and prevent any other ailments. Dr. Mary Flynn, an associate professor at Boston University, said she has been studying extra virgin olive oil for 30 years and found that it is the only food that will have a greater effect on every chronic disease imaginable. Now, that's a pretty powerful statement. But if I've been in the Mediterranean countries, and I'm sure many of you have as well. Greece, Italy, Turkey, Croatia, Morocco. They all not only sprinkle olive oil on their foods, they drink it. They drink a quarter of a cup a day on average, and some up to a cup a day of olive oil. Yeah, you heard me, a cup. I found people in the Mediterranean countries when I visited there, they're actually consuming a cup of olive oil a day. But the minimum that anyone should consume is two tablespoons a day. That's the minimum. All right, let's help kids. How can we help kids focus better? Well, there is an herb that helps to relieve ADD and ADHD. And that herb is, well, actually, it's a spice. It's called saffron. S-A-F-F-R-O-N, saffron, has been shown to stimulate neurotransmitters in the brain that are associated with ADHD, including serotonin and dopamine. In a new trial, researchers treated kids ages 7 to 17 with either 30 milligrams of saffron at night or Ritalin in the morning for three months. Both treatments worked equally as well. The spice worked equally as well as the drug. In improving symptoms of ADD and ADHD and depression, And the kids taking saffron slept better, had better sleep, than the kids taking Ritalin. In looking at specific symptoms, saffron was superior to the drug at reducing hyperactivity. 
and there are no significant side effects, no adverse events associated with saffron. Very, very safe. While long-term use of the drug has been associated with decreased appetite, insomnia, headache, and anxiety. Saffron will help kids focus better, concentrate better, learn better, have better learning skills and memory, and reduce depression, reduce ADHD, reduce ADD, without a drug, but with safe, non-toxic, no side effects, the spice, saffron. How are you doing with seasonal allergies? Do you suffer from the seasonal allergies? Well, I may have an answer for you. I would suggest that you try propolis. P-R-O-P-O-L-I-S, propolis. It's a substance that the bees, you know, the bees gather pollen and they carry it back into the hive. But they also gather polyphenols from trees and shrubs and buds and plants, flowers. It's a different substance. Polyphenols are bioflavonoids. They're healthy for both human and animals. And propolis is a substance given to this group of plant life because it means defend the city. It's a Greek name. Defend the city. As the bees defend their colony, as propolis defends our immune system, propolis is a very powerful antimicrobial. Kills off all types of pathogens, fungal and bacterial infection, fungal infection, and allergies. Approximately 20 to 30 percent of people have allergies. And the prevalence of allergic diseases like asthma, hay fever, food allergies is increasing worldwide. Propolis is a natural anti inflammatory and has been shown to inhibit allergic inflammatory responses in the cell, both animal and human trials. In a comparison of different types of propolis, meaning by how was the propolis extracted? Was it either water or alcohol extraction? And they found that both strongly inhibit mast cell activity, which means the mast cells release histamine. So that's why you buy an antihistamine Propolis is a natural antihistamine and other compounds that cause allergic reactions. In an animal model of hay fever, propolis significantly reduced sneezing and inhibited histamine release. For the asthma patient, the asthmatic, when treated with propolis for three months, Nighttime asthma attacks dropped from an average of 2.5 per week to just one a week. And lung function improved by up to 30%. And this is very safe for both children and adults, even down to an infant. It is extremely safe. It's like eating vegetables. Very, very safe. No side effects. And also, propolis 
is also non-allergic, even though that it comes from bees. It's hypoallergenic. Now make sure you pick out the right propolis. Because when the bees use propolis to defend their city, the colony, or the hive, they mix beeswax and resin to be able to use it inside the beehive. But we can't digest beeswax and resin. So when propolis is taken from the hive, it is contaminated with not bad. It wouldn't hurt us if we ate it. But we won't get any value from the propolis because it's mixed with beeswax and resin. So we have to purify the propolis. And the propolis you want is the clinically studied propolis that is purified by removing the wax, the resin, and the impurities which then yields a more powerful concentrated extract. The bees propolis is about 80 to 90% beeswax. Our stomachs do not digest wax. So there are companies that have found a way to remove the wax and remove the resin without chemicals, without solvents, to come up with a purified, highly concentrated propolis, 100% propolis. And this is all done through an ethical management of beehives, which is very important. The bees are not harmed. The hives are not harmed. So we want to preserve the bees. Because mortality among European wild bees is as high as 20%. Now, 200 milligrams daily of this very highly purified propolis is ideal for adults. You can double it for a while if you want. You can double it forever if you want. There's no side effects. But just cost effective. 200 milligrams daily is sufficient. If you come down with a cold or flu and you want to take more, you can double the dosage, triple the dosage, or whatever. And for children, you can find it in chewable tablets. You can find it in capsule form. And it's very safe for kids and very effective for children that have ear infections. But always consult your doctor when you have infection or a condition that might cause fever. Keep your kids safe. Now, how can you give your gut a boost with almonds? Nuts are very rarely eaten as a food. They're a snack once in a while. Some people have a bag of Nuts when they're on a plane for a quick snack. Christmas time, everybody eats more nuts. Nuts, or a variety of them, almonds, pistachios, walnuts, pecans, should be part of our daily diet. We should have a small handful of nuts of some kind every day. It's a good food, good fat and has an effect on the body in a very healthy way. And now we find they are very effective, almonds in this case, on your intestinal tract. Researchers recruited 85 volunteers who typically ate unhealthy snacks like chips and candy for a one-month study. One group replaced their usual snacks with two ounces of almonds. Two ounces. Probably a little handful. And the other group received a calorie-matched muffin 
as a control. And the results of this study, almond eating increased the level of short chain fatty acids, which helps reduce intestinal inflammation and keeps the intestinal barrier stronger by 32% versus the muffin eating group that had no value. And additionally, the almond eaters had a 1.5 additional bowel movement a week, suggesting that almonds might be very helpful for people for people who suffer from constipation. It provides more fiber. The only thing in, with nuts that I would suggest, chew them very, very well. They're very, they have a lot of fiber, and if you don't chew them well, the bigger the piece swallowed, if you swallow an almond whole, it's going to go right straight through whole. Nothing will break it down. So you have to chew nuts very, very, very well. And unfortunately, one in 10 Americans today, over 65, oh my, have dementia. Where did I leave my keys? Where are my socks? Where was I going? Was I coming or was I going? Should I put my hat on or should I take my hat off? Wow. It does happen. One in ten today. Dementia is so common among elderly adults. As part of an ongoing study that has been active since 1992, researchers surveyed 3,500 adults over the age of 65 representing an average Americans who underwent comprehensive neurological testing between 2016 and 2017. 10% of the subjects had dementia and 22% had mild cognitive impairment. Every five-year increase in age was associated with a higher, higher risk of dementia. The dementia rate was 35% for people over the age of 90 or older. The number of adults living with dementia is expected to triple three times by 2050. We are not eating the right diet. We're not eating the right food. And we are lowering cholesterol when we don't need to or should to. We are doing everything by drug. Drug is the answer for everything. And not. Food is our best medicine. Change your diet. Change your lifestyle. Make better choices. Eat a healthy diet. If you don't know what a healthy diet is, go to my website, terrytalksnutrition.com, and click on my diet, Terry's diet. And that'll save your mind. It'll improve your thinking and your cognitive function. Reduce the loss of memory. It'll improve your health overall. Add some exercise. Get a really good night's sleep. Eight to nine hours of sleep. Yes, eight to nine. Exercise. Walk. Do something. Get moving. And with that, my friends, I've got to get moving. I'm all out of time. But I'll be back here tomorrow, 8 o'clock till 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. So, my friends, do something constructive this week, health-wise. And then say a prayer for this crazy, crazy world. God bless you, my friends. And God bless this great country. 
Thank you for listening to Terry Talks Nutrition Weekly Show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio.